This year is a year of jubilee, praise God. This is a year that the Lord has told us that uh, we're going to increase, we're going to uh, abound in all good works, amen? And so the word that I have for you today is along the same lines uh, as last week, and uh, this is really dear to my heart because as, you know, pastoring uh, over 30 years, I've seen so many people start off and they start a good race. But I'm here to tell you, I want to finish my course with joy. I'm not going to fold up and quit no matter what. And, you know, the devil doesn't stop. He is trying to work on each one of us uh, to take us out one at a time if he can. And if he can isolate you and get you off by yourself, uh, he's got a better chance of doing that. So I want to encourage you, get involved in the fellowships and the things that we're doing so you can stay connected. Uh, so people can stay praying for you. But I wanted to start off this morning by telling you this, that God's word uh, is full of promises. But not all of those promises will be enjoyed or appreciated by everyone in the body of Christ. Because people aren't willing to walk in what it takes to get it. But if you will walk in it, not get discouraged, stay with it, God has a covenant promise to you and to me. And you've got to stay with it. You've got to bloom where you're planted. Amen. Amen. You, you cannot just get discouraged and fold up and quit every time some pressure comes. Amen. 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 Because pressure will come. And when Tony Cook was here a couple of weeks ago, he showed you that, that you can be in the will of God and be under pressure. You can be out of the will of God and be under pressure. You can be doing everything perfect and be under pressure. Storms come to you no matter what, but you know how to overcome the storms. Amen? And, and by the way, um, I, I didn't tell you this announcement, but our national director, Doug Jones, is coming the last Sunday in April. So, guys, you don't want to miss that service. I taught him everything he knows, so he's almost as good as me. So you don't want to miss that. All right. I want you to open your Bibles this morning to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And... I want to share a word with you today, and we'll come back to this, but this is the title of this message, that the faithful shall flourish. I said the faithful shall flourish. This is a word from the Lord. Amen? Now Moses was preaching to the congregation that he was overseeing, millions of people, and they had endured many tests and trials and problems, at different times, they wanted to kill Moses. They wanted to stone him. You know, they wanted to get rid of him. Said he was a bad leader, whatever. But he would preach to them and share with them that, guys, uh, if you'll stick with the things of God, don't draw back. Don't let anyone pull you away from God. You will flourish. You will flourish. That's God's promise. Amen. I want you to see it here in verse 21. Uh, do we have the scriptures, guys? Jeremy, do we have those? Verse 21, Deuteronomy eleven twenty-one. 21. There we go. It says, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. One person, one week, Hallelujah. as days of heaven upon the earth. Amen. Got a couple more weak amens. This is a promise. This is a promise from God that you will have flourishing days. Look at the next verse, verse 22. For if you shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. Then he promises that you will flourish and have days of heaven upon the earth. The, the New uh, Living Translation says that you might flourish. Put that up there, Jeremy. Do you have it in the New Living Bible? He says that you will flourish. He said, write them on the doorpost of your house. Go back one scripture, verse 21. So that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may what? Flourish. Say it out loud. Flourish. Say it again. Flourish. 
Say, I will, I will flourish, flourish because I am faithful. I will not draw back. I am faithful. I'm in the number. I'm in this number. I proclaim this promise that I will flourish if I faint not. Hallelujah. My family, my children, my grandchildren, my heritage to the fourth generation, they will flourish. Now they may try to go to hell, but they're not going. They've been preached to, they've been taught. When they get older, they'll not depart from it. They may stray, but they're going to come back. They know where to call when they need help. Amen. They know where to go when they need help. They know where to be encouraged from. Now I want you to see something here. Turn back to uh, the beginning of the chapter. uh, And let's look at verse 3 and 4. Verse 3 and 4. Moses was trying to encourage the people. Put them in remembrance. He said, and his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. And what he did unto the army of Egypt, unto the horses, their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord had destroyed them unto this day. Moses was standing before the congregation and he was refreshing their memory because in a test or a trial or a problem, oftentimes we can forget about how blessed we really were, how blessed we really are. The days that the Lord saved you, healed you, delivered you, brought you out. And Moses was sharing with them. He said, God brought you out of Egypt. He destroyed Pharaoh. He destroyed the army. He took care of you. He went on to tell them and reminded them about the the food and the manna and the water and, and all of the blessings of God. And then when we get over into verse 21, he says, and if you will diligently listen and obey God and stay faithful, you will flourish. Don't forget what God has done. Don't draw back. Don't get upset. Don't get discouraged and go build a fatted calf somewhere. Or I, mean a, a, I mean a golden calf. Don't go off and start serving other gods. Don't go back to your own vomit, but stay with God. Guys, every one of us need to remember where we came from. He took us out of the miry pit. He took us out of the slaves of the world, and he brought us into the kingdom of God. And we need to remember that and stay faithful, and he will deliver you. Oftentimes it doesn't look like you're, you're, you're headed in the right path, but if you're staying with God, he's getting you to where he wants you to go. He promises that, that you will flourish. You will flourish. You will have abundant supply. That's his word. Oftentimes it doesn't look like it. There might be some temporary setback. But I see in the word of God that God will restore two two times as much as what you had. If you've lost anything, he will get you twice as much as you had. And actually in Proverbs it says he has the capability and the ability of restoring a sevenfold return. So if you've suffered a temporary setback, it's just temporary. I said it's just temporary. Storms of life may try to come and they may take you out. You may suffer some loss of the ship or or something like that, like Paul did. But your life is still here. Praise the Lord. And as long as you've got life and as long as you stay with Jesus, he will continue to take you in a direction where you will flourish. You will. That's his covenant promise. Amen. Amen. Say, I'm in that number. I'm going to stay faithful. Guys, every one of us have the opportunity. And right now, you may be as strong in your faith as you've ever been. But there are times when, if, when the devil will come and he'll try to start chipping at you, whittling at you, trying to get you discouraged, trying to get you to fold up and quit. He works on every one of us. He comes in one of five areas. He, he'll try to come at you with the riches of this world or the deceitfulness of riches the cares of this world, the lust of other things. He'll come at you with relationship. He'll come at you any way he can get you discouraged and and try to get us offended and get us to fold up and quit. Amen. Uh, Pastor Dorothy and I almost quit uh, a few years ago. Uh, As a matter of fact, it, it looked like 
it looked like we were headed down the wrong path. It looked like our, our time here in Mustang was over. To us, it began to look like it. We, so we began to look at other places. We began to pray and ask God. Something was stirring on the inside of us. We knew it was stirring on the inside. We went and looked at uh, other facilities in Oklahoma City. We thought about going and starting a satellite church. We thought about shutting this down and moving over into Oklahoma City where it was a bigger area where we could minister to more people. We, we started looking uh, uh, at, at leaving the state. We tried different, but everything seemed to close down. It just didn't seem right. But yet we felt there was something else going on the inside. And I, Pastor Bob was still alive then, and I even told him one day, I said, I, we feel like a big fish in a little pond. Something is going on, we're not sure what it is. And he told me, he said, just stay put. He knew something was going on behind the scenes I didn't know about. But you see, we had waited and waited and waited. The Lord gave me a word back in, I, I believe, I didn't write it down, but I believe it was 1987 that he told me I would be regional director. That, that was, and I had been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and never told anybody. Didn't even tell Pastor Dorothy. I just kept it within myself. And we had a good regional director. And so I, when Pastor Bob resigned his church and he started going out on the field, I thought, well, this is the opportunity that God's going to make a change. And that didn't happen. They wouldn't let Pastor Bob resign. He kept him as the regional director. But he started traveling. And then not long after that, I thought, okay, what's, what's going on, God? What is happening? Well, they, um, they were working on making district directors. And so we were in that number, and we became district director. And so but Dorothy said, well, maybe that was it. And I said, no, that's not it. I said, district director is not regional director. Regional director is overseeing the whole state of Oklahoma. So then what happened is we got... Uh, uh, the St. Thomas Christian University in Florida contacted us and uh, wanted to give us our doctorate degrees. And so we thought, okay, uh, maybe that's uh, an avenue sh we should head off in. So you, some of you were here during that time and we got our doctorate degrees. And uh, then when we got our doctorate degrees, uh, uh, he was so impressed with the church and what he saw and the, the administration here that he wanted to make us dean over the university. He wanted us to start uh, actually three universities here in Oklahoma City. He wanted us to be the dean. And I thought, all right, maybe I missed it. I'm not going to be regional director. I'm going to take this position. But in order to take that position, I would have to had, I would have had to have had, I would have needed to pull my credentials from Rama because you can't be in two camps at the same time. So I would have had to have withdrawn from Rama, cut the ties from Rama, and joined this other organization in order to be the dean of that university. Guys, that's a pretty prestigious offer. And I'm thinking, man, this is it. But down on the inside, I kept hearing this song. Uh, Mark Hankins uh, said this one time. He said, I'm going to dance with the one that brung me. I thought, no, forget it. So I told that guy in Florida, I said, forget it. We're staying here in Mustang. We're staying with Rama. We're staying put. And it wasn't too long after that, that Pastor Bob resigned and we became regional directors. But you see, we could have quit. We could have gotten discouraged. It was over 20 years. 20 years. Some of you have been praying for 20 days and you're ready to quit. I'm talking 20 years. Guys, don't quit. If you've got something in your heart, don't quit. If we would have moved, if we would have changed, then we would have missed the promise of God. You cannot get discouraged and quit because God promises that you will flourish if you stay faithful. Amen, I'm talking about faithful. Say the faithful will flourish. I'm in, that I'm in that number. Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's look at verse 20. This is no new message, but it's a, it's a now word for 2017. I said this is a now word for 2017. This is for you if you'll receive it. 
Well, it doesn't mean that every prophetic word is going to be fulfilled in your life. You have to receive it and you have to walk in it. Claim it as mine. Hallelujah. Say it's mine. I will flourish in 2017. Now watch this. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on. Let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all the ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil." I'm going to talk to you for a few more moments about five ways of the faithful person. Five ways of faithful. Now, I'm not talking about just being faithful in your church attendance, faithful in your support, faithful in your prayers. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about right now, I'm talking about being faithful in your life. There are five keys right here in this portion of Scripture of what you need to do to remain faithful. Number one is you need to have faithful eyes. Amen. Your eyes need to be fixed upon the Word of God. Don't look off this and that and look everywhere else. Jeremy, did you have those five things posted, buddy? Did you get those down there? If not, I'll just read them to you. They didn't get them. So your eyes need to be fixed. Say, I have faithful eyes. Glory to God. We could take that over into a marriage relationship. Ha ha. Oh, I just hit a nerve there. That wasn't in my notes. Be faithful to your spouse. Be faithful to your spouse. Faithful. There are a lot of ways of being faithful. We're going to look at them. I, I was bragging one day to the Lord. I don't know if you've ever done that or not. I was sitting on the front porch, probably, it's probably been 15 years ago now, and I was feeling pretty good about myself watching the sun go down and I was enjoying the front porch and I was, Lord, I said, Lord, I have really been faithful to Dorothy. I've been faithful for years. Never cheated on her. I said, I, I, I'm a good husband. I do all right. And after I got through bragging and I shut up, the Lord said, oh, really? You remember when you worked at this place and you were at the break table and you were talking about how Dorothy didn't do this and she didn't do that and she didn't treat you right and she did this? He said, you weren't being faithful. You were bad-mouthing your wife to other guys. Amen. You were gossiping and talking bad about your wife. That is about as unfaithful as you can get. Amen. I said, oh, wow. I've been an unfaithful husband for years complaining about my wife. You had to come in right when I said unfaithful, right? You sure you don't have more coffee back there and more rolls? Guys, listen to me. Well, yeah, I've been faithful in church. Have you? Have you only talked good things about your church? Have you only talked good things about the pastor, about the people sitting around you? Or do you go around and tell everybody, well, well, pastor did this. All he wants is money. And pastor, all he did was this. And all he did was that. And I sat next to somebody. That I had to sit in a different chair because somebody sat in my seat. And so-and-so got my cup of coffee. And they got the last cinnamon roll back there. And you're bad-mouthing everybody in church. And you want to fill it up with other people. Nobody's going to come to your church if you're not faithful. If you don't support one another, love one another, and talk good about one another, people aren't going to want to come to your church. There are a lot of people that won't go to church today because they say it's full of hypocrites. Well, guys, we need to talk good about one another. We need to brag about one another. How awesome we are. Amen? So that people, when they come in here, they think they're going to find a bunch of people standing around with wings. And then we'll tell them, no, those are just shoulder blades. So we need to keep our eyes fixed, guys. We need to stay fixed, amen, stay faithful. Our ears need to listen continually to the Word of God. Today in the world that we live in, if you listen to much news or you listen to Fox Channel, I mean, my goodness, there is so much garbage going on. 
Guys, the word of God says we will prevail. The word of God says we will flourish. The word of God says we overcome. Keep your ears listening to the word of God. You need to get CD messages of the word of God. You need to get your favorite message and listen to it at home. Listen to it at nighttime. Put it on your iPad. You need to constantly hear the word of God. Amen. Another way a faithful person uh, stays faithful is through their mouth. You need to be speaking the word of God. I try to get this to some people sometimes, you know, and, 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 and you know, if you, if you ever talk to somebody and they've got a problem in their finances or in their body, uh, and, and it's okay to talk about it. The Apostle Paul and the psalmist, they would go to God and talk about their problem. But after they talked about the problem, then the Lord would direct them over into his promises. And once you find out what the promise is in your situation, don't talk the problem again. He says, change your mouth. Talk what God's word says. Let God's word come out of your mouth. Amen. You know, we let things slip. I heard somebody the other day just casually said, well, I'm a slow learner. I said, well, that's your confession, and I agree with you. Well, you're trying to sound humble when really you're just feeding yourself the wrong thing. Amen. I've got the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to live long and I'm going to live strong. I'm not going to lose my mind and become senile. I'm not where to go. You're not going to stick me in a place where nobody knows my name, including myself. I'm not going to lose my mind. Amen. I'm going to live long and live strong. Keep the word of God in your mouth. The fourth thing is he said you need to have your heart filled. Guard your heart. Guys, if you start hearing a bunch of trash and a bunch of garbage, you get away from it. Uh, you know, people think that these two things on the side of my head are trash cans. They're not trash cans. I'm not going to let you dump on me about other people or anything like that. You know what a good thing to do is? If somebody comes up to you and says, well, uh, did you know what Pastor Dorothy did? No, but I'm glad you mentioned her name. I was thinking about her too. Let's pray right now. That'll shut them up. This is a good guideline. The Lord gave me this. If I am out at coffee or something uh, with, uh, what's your name? <laughs> if I'm out with Merle and Merle uh, and Ken's not there and Merle says, hey, you, you know what I found out about Ken? Uh, I can stop him right there because what, if, you can't, if Ken were sitting here, would you tell me what you're about to tell me? He wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> if you can't talk about me and say things about me if I was there, then you shouldn't be saying it at all. You shouldn't be saying it at all. Amen. That's a big deal. That's a big deal, keeping our mouth off of other people. Don't you have enough of your own things to take care of? Don't, are you perfect? then I think you should talk about you. Amen. Amen. Talk about you. Come on. Jerry's laughing. I got to tell you that it, I met Jerry back in the 80s, early 80s, and she invited us over for dinner. Now, you know, when you go on the mission field, they tell you to eat what's put before you. Did you know that? Did you know that? Well, I went over to Jerry's mission field and she put Parmesan cheese all over this chicken. Ugh. That pushes my gag button, I'll tell you. Ugh. There's nothing good about Parmesan. It smells like somebody took off their combat boot and hung their dirty socks up. It's just, it's got to be the most terrible food on the planet. But we had Parmesan crusted chicken. Nobody, yeah. <laughs> Nobody knew it until this moment. But while we were over at Jerry's house, we, we, uh, we um, she had a big cat. I don't know how old your cat was. But I learned something that I didn't know about cats. I'm not a cat person. Uh, but she, uh, 
got some Vaseline and was putting Vaseline in the cat's mouth. She said, you have to do that once in a while because cats lick themselves and they get fur balls and they can choke on that fur ball. But if they have Vaseline in their mouth, then that fur ball won't stick in there and it won't gag them and kill them. I thought that was really interesting. And I thought, we need that in the body of Christ. The next time you start licking your tongue on me, I hope you choke on a fur ball. The only way you're not going to choke on a fur ball is if you got the oil of the Holy Ghost inside of you. You need the oil of the Holy Ghost. And if you don't have the oil of the Holy Ghost, I hope you gag when you talk about me. Next time you talk about pastor, I know what the talk of the table is. I'm going to get all kinds of emails and everything about Parmesan cheese now. I know it. Last time I talked about toilet paper, I got all kinds of emails about the toilet paper. Let's go on. How'd you all get off into all that anyway? So you got to keep your heart filled with the Word of God. The fifth thing that I want to talk to you about is your feet. You've got to keep your feet on the straight and narrow path. Keep going in the direction God told you to go in and don't waver from it. Don't move from it. So you've got to keep your eyes and your ears and your mouth and your heart and your feet all fixed on the promises of God. No matter what happens in this life, no matter who comes, who goes and what they do, you keep fixed on the word of God. Hallelujah. And you will flourish. Say, I'm in the number. I will flourish. All right, turn, uh, uh, let me give you a definition for flourish. Uh, did you get this on the board, Jeremy? Definitions for flourish. You can go ahead and put them all up there or one at a time, whatever you want. Number one is flourish means to thrive. Woo, glory to God. There's a new song, or song out that we, I've, I love this song, that we were, we were meant to thrive. Oh, glory to God, I like that. We were meant to thrive. Number two to flourish means to increase. To flourish. In 2017, say it out loud. I will thrive, and I will increase, and I will enlarge. Number three is enlarge. So I will thrive, I will increase, and I will enlarge, and I will grow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I'm actually trying to shrink a little bit. I don't want to grow too much more. <laughs> Pastor Dorothy said that one number on our scale tells the fat, fat content. I need that one to go down. Hallelujah. So I need to thrive. Number five is to prosper. Ooh, glory to God. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to flourish. Number six means, uh, another meaning is to abound. Another one at seven means to spread out. Glory to God. Hey, you all need to buy some more property, I guess. We need to buy some more property for the church. Get some more. We don't have to buy it. Amen. We don't have to buy it. Amen. If the Lord had need of it, we'll just get it. Amen. I'm sorry, Lord. I said that. We don't have to buy it. Number seven. Uh, I already said that. Number eight means to expand. Number nine, to make steady progress. Make steady progress. Make steady progress. Oh, listen to me, guys. Too much progress too fast can ruin a person. You won't be able to handle it. But steadily growing and going, hallelujah, that's when it is great. That's flourishing. And I like number 10. Number 10 says, to be at a high point in my life. So 2017 is going to be my high point in my life. I'm going to flourish, glory to God. I'm going to thrive. You need to write those 10 things down and and confess them every day. I'm going to thrive. I'm going to increase. I'm going to enlarge. I'm going to grow. I'm going to prosper, abound, and spread out and expand and make steady progress. Hallelujah. This is going to be the high point of my life. Woo! Glory to God. Turn to Psalm 92. Psalm 92. We're talking about flourishing. Say, the faithful will flourish. Hallelujah. Some of you said it like you weren't sure. I, I was sure. <laughs> Say, that's me. me. I'm going to flourish. Gonna flourish. All right, look at uh, verse 10. Verse 10. No, let's just start with verse 11. 
Now let's start with verse 12. It says, the righteous, is that you? The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat, or they'll increase, and flourishing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That word fat to me just means I'm going to have an abundant supply. Amen. I'm not claiming the fat. Hallelujah. Listen to this, guys. He said, you've got to be planted in the house of the Lord. There are a lot of people that, that won't go to church today. They, they say, well, I'm not into organized religion. God, God, guys, that's the way God made it. He made it so that we'll come together. He made it so that we can accomplish things together. He made it for us to be a big team so we can get it done, so we can encourage one another. That's been his plan ever since the book of Acts. Amen. And we're not finished with the book of Acts. We are still writing the book of Acts now. The book of Acts does not have an amen after it. It's not going to have an amen after it until Jesus comes and takes the church out of here. Then it's going to say, amen, it's done. But I want you to see something here. Talking about the growth of the palm tree, think about this. Think about this. A palm tree grows in a desolate place. Why? Because its roots go deep and its roots can go and get the water where there doesn't seem to be any water. So guys, if you're in a dry place on your job and it doesn't seem like there are any Christians around there, it might be that you're the palm tree there, that you're supposed to be there. But I like the palm tree. The palm tree, if you've ever seen it in a storm where there's a hurricane, it, 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 will, it can blow over and the, and the leaves can touch the ground and it won't break. The storms of life may come at you as a planted palm tree and you'll bend, but you won't break. You won't go under. Woo! I like this. The fruit is up high on a palm tree. It's up high so the predators can't get it. See, when you've got the fruit of the Spirit and you're staying in the things of God, the predator can't get it from you. Amen. And the fruit is, is, is full of luscious uh, nutrition. They make a good drink out of the, the fruit of a palm tree. The palm tree has so many uses. The leaves of the, of the palm tree, they make baskets out of it. And the larger palm leaves, they actually make fences out of it. And the strings that are in the palm leaves, they, they can take those strings and they can make rope out of it. There are so many uses of a person that's planted in the things of God, planted in the house of God. You can produce fruit. You can add flavor. You can uh, be an example of a storm in your life. We can build up fences to keep the devil out. We can build ropes to tie one another together. Why? Because we're all part of that palm tree. Oh, glory to God. There's a, there is one thing that I know for sure that will kill a palm tree, and that's cold. If you get cold in the things of God, you better watch out. You better stir yourself up. If you're going to flourish, you better plant yourself in church. Plant yourself in the church that God wants you there. Glory to God, and don't be moved. No matter what. This is where God wants me. This is where I'm staying. Devil, leave me alone. I'm not budging. Glory to God. Yeah, somebody took my parking spot, but I'll make a new one. Amen. Amen. Somebody sat in my seat, but I'll take a new one. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some of you need to move around a little bit anyway and get to know some other people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The faithful will flourish. The, 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 tree, the tree part of the palm tree, they actually take and, and they cut it eventually and they make lumber out of it to build houses. Oh, glory to God. Are you getting anything from this this morning? When you flourish, glory to God, it's because you're planted. You're faithful. And you need to bloom where you're planted. Find out 
what God wants you to do. Amen? And just get in there and be a part. Hallelujah. It's still God's plan. It's his plan that we will flourish. Amen? Amen. Is that you? Amen. Say, I claim it. I claim in it. Jesus' name, in Jesus. I will flourish. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet, everybody. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. You know, you can even take an ax to a palm tree and you can chop at its trunk and you still not kill it. That means you can endure tests and trials from the enemy. That means you'll come through it. Amen. If you stay planted. Amen. But today we've got a lot of people that are just transplanting. Just running all over the place. Trying to find a perfect church. The only perfect one you're going to find is where there's nobody in it. In case you haven't noticed, you're standing next to a people. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. There's only one perfect person in this church, and that's Pastor Dorothy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I'm looking forward to this year, to 2017. I'm looking forward to flourishing. I'm looking forward to you flourishing. I'm looking forward to uh, the things of God coming to fruition. Guys, this thing is winding down. Jesus is getting ready to come back for a glorious church. Amen. A church that knows how to operate in the things of God. Amen. We're not going to kick the Holy Spirit out of church. I'm expecting great and mighty things to happen. We're talking about the gifts of the Spirit on Wednesday. We're teaching you about the Spirit of God and how the Spirit of God moves. And so I'm expecting great and mighty things. Amen. 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 How about you? Yeah. Well, lift your hands and say it out loud. I am, I am. in the number. I will flourish in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Eddie Thompson is going to close in prayer, and then we're going to be dismissed. Come join us at New Beginnings Family Church, located in Mustang, Oklahoma, at 1615 East State Highway 152. You can find us online on Facebook and YouTube or at walkbyfaith.info. To contact us, call 405-261-6887. And remember, you don't need a second chance. You need a new beginning.